All right, so I am Megan Jacks. Welcome to Scrapbook Live for Wednesday, September 6th. Um, before we get going too much, um, I did have a comment here as we were getting started on today's thing, asking me about that thing. There we go. I'm not, I, I don't know how to do the thing. That thing hanging from my, um, back thing is just an over the, over the door. I think it was like a kitchen organizer. Like you could put spices or packets in there or whatever. It's pretty deep. It's about five inches deep and about 13 inches wide. So go look on Amazon for over the door hangers. I'll actually link it in my blog posts when I update the blog post from today. Cause it's really, really handy. I can put all sorts of stuff in there. Okay. So back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, the layout we're doing today is from the Creative Memories blog. Hopefully you have a handout. It's in the um, post description. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, if you are watching this on YouTube later, you will see it in the description um, linked below or the link in the description below. That's it. And so this is um, a really nice layout. It's very clean. I love the angles. I love all of the stuff about this layout. Um, the only part I didn't really love were the directions only because it has you cutting some really big squares and you cover everything up and you use kind of a little bit more paper maybe than you would have to. So I am going to show you how we'll talk about how the directions tell you to do it so that if you have questions on how the directions work, I can show you that. But then I am going to give you some additional things. You'll want to have a pen or a pencil, um, some additional measurements, and I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to make it that isn't going to use, I think it's a little bit more sparing on the paper that we use um, because of the way this sets up, you actually end up covering up. You make some really large squares, you cut them on the diagonal, you punch, 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 and then you end up covering up some of the bigger squares. And so that's a lot of layers that end up being on the paper. And I don't like to necessarily hide all my pretty paper behind other layers when I could have used and saved those pieces for later. So have a pencil, have some paper. Um, so you can take notes, a pen or pencil, take notes on your handout. Um, that's probably going to be the best way to do it there. I'm going to switch over here to my desktop and I will show you what we've got going. All right, so I am working with some graduation photos. Like I said, these are from my son. My oldest child graduated in 2022. I am, the pictures I have are the really terrible pictures I have of the overall ceremony where they're, you know, they're sitting there, their hats are flying. Here's this a really terrible picture of him and the audience are in, you know, in with his thing. He's got such a lovely expression on his face. And then here he is receiving his diploma from the um, school district, the superintendent of the school district. So um, what I decided to do is I am using paper for um, just kind of that picks up the school colors. So we did have the um, congrats grad uh, papers. Um, I um, I had already set aside a bunch of um, black, their, their school colors were crimson and gray. Um, I have those papers kind of where I just have shoved a bunch of things together with the crimson and gray, um, the black and the white in there. And that just lets me, when I'm working on his school book, his, um, from his high school, those are mostly what I default to. I default to school colors, unless it's an event that is um, like, so he went to what they call senior ball. I did photo, um, used papers that were more in line with what he and his um, friend were wearing um, for their kind of like this crazy suits that they bought. Anyway, so I am defaulting just using some black tonal paper. This has a slight pattern to it. I believe this one was out of the um, picture this collection, the tonal papers that had the black, the blues, in there, um, the tonal black, we have some platinum shimmer, some crimson cardstock, white shimmer, and black shimmer. I'm not 100% certain how I'm using, I know for sure I'm using the crimson and the platinum shimmer. The white and the black are here. I think I might be pulling in some black. I might matte my photos in white. I'm not sure, but this is my color palette. This is why I'm working with. It goes with his um, high school colors. Out of the congrats grad embellishment pack, I did pick out all of the stuff that either has silver. Um, I left all the gold behind for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the gold. Um, I'm a little color picky. And since they have gray, um, I've been defaulting with more of the silver rather than you pulling in the gold. So I might wait and use the gold for his college album instead. We will see. He's not really going to have a college album. 
it might be like literally like three layouts, you know, like first move in some random stuff throughout the college years and then graduation. Anyway, so the background paper I'm going to be using is going to be this tonal um, color here, this uh, background, this tonal black. So that is my background color right here. So now it's going to be a matter of figuring out how I intend to use the, the order in which I'm going to lay out my colors. I'm actually not going to worry about that right now. What I am going to walk you through is how you would follow the directions if you wanted to follow the blog. And then I'm going to go off-roading a little bit outside their lines. And I've got some measurements here. And I'm going to talk to you and tell you why the measurements I have over here versus the blog post. But let me walk you through the directions first. This whole layout uses a bunch of squares, which are cut. You cut them at nine inch square, seven inch, five inch, and three inch squares. So you have four squares. You then cut those squares on the diagonal, put all those pieces with the long edge in your trimmer, or excuse me, in your border maker system, and then you punch, punch, punch until you've punched all the edges. You can use a knockout style, which is the confetti here is a knockout style. They use the um, chevron arrows, which is also a knockout style, meaning it is not altering the outside edge of your paper. Or you could use an edge style border maker punch um, or just a regular border punch. You could probably use the edge style. An edge style would be something like picket fence. You could use um, picket fence is a good one. Starry, if you have woven scallops, if you have anything, an edge style is something that stays attached to the paper, the main body of the paper, but it does alter that outside edge. So they want us, there's, they tell us to cut those squares. Now they use four different pieces of paper here, four different patterns. Of course, when you cut your squares, you could just cut them on um, out of a couple different sheets of paper and use the reverse side. I'm gonna show you on just a piece of white cardstock. Now, of course, what I'm about to do, you don't necessarily have to do um, because you'll just be cutting with your trimmer, but I wanna show you how you could lay this out. So imagine I've got a two-sided sheet of paper. I can cut one square, I can cut my nine inch square here, roughly. This is my nine inch square. I then have the ability to come, I've got a three inch wide piece. I could then come over here and I can get my three inch square. All right, and we would cut on the diagonal and then we would punch and punch. Here, we would also do the same punch on each side of the diagonal after cutting. All right, so that's how you can get, if you wanna use one sheet of paper to be able to get your nine inch square and your three inch square, those partner together. So your nine inch square, whatever's on the reverse side of it could become your three inch square. You also could still just use the same pattern because these are gonna be separated from each other on your actual um, overall layout, right? So they could be the same pattern. Now, when you're doing your five and your seven inch square, five and seven together make 12, so we can get them out of the same piece. We could cut our seven inch square, and then we can come over here and we would have our five inch square, again, using two sides of the same sheet of paper. So don't think that you have to have four separate pieces of paper that you're cutting your squares out of. It does leave us with some bigger chunks up here, especially on this one where we're doing the five and the seven, but it's the same concept. We come in here, cut each of these on the diagonal and punch and punch. Same here, punch and punch. So it's overall, it is very easy to set, um, to set this up. All right, the downside is when you start layering these together, if we look here, I am essentially covering up all of this, gets covered up by the layers. That's a lot of waste in my opinion. Um, the seven inch has a little bit of waste to it. The five and the three inch ones aren't so bad in terms of the amount of waste that you're using. Um, 
but it it still is can be a lot of layers. And I know that um, not everybody. Sometimes you like to be a little bit more conservative on your um, what you're doing. But this is probably the most straightforward, easiest way to put it together because once you start cutting these out, it is super easy just to line everything up. You stack them all and defaulting down to this corner and then you're gonna put them on the opposite edges of your paper and be done. So let me show you really quick. I am gonna just do a quick, um, grab my trimmer. Let me grab a fresh sheet of paper. I'm sticking with the white. I am just going to show you really quick. I want to show you the nine inch one. I'm going to cut this to a nine inch square. Here's my three inch piece. I could still cut my three inch piece. I actually probably wouldn't cut it out of this piece. I would say this piece because I got a full 12 or uh, three inches wide by 12 tall. This I could use for borders. So I'm going to set that aside. Come over here, trim this out at nine inches. So I have a nine inch square. I would use from this piece. This is the piece, if I was gonna cut that three inch piece, I would cut it out of this piece because it's basically a scrap. It's not a full 12 inch length. Um, so cutting that square out of here is probably your most efficient use of your paper. Now, here I need to cut this one on the diagonal. This is my nine inch square. It basically is about as long of a diagonal that you can easily cut with the 12 inch trimmer. I can get from edge to edge. You're gonna wanna line it up using your cut guides, you can come in here with your um, your sight lines, or the sight guides, and just make sure you're at that corner. Come down here at the same, those plastic sight guides can come in and just make sure you're lined up where you need to be, and then go ahead and cut. You can start that cut in the middle, go up and then come back down. All right, so here we go. I've got my two triangles, and I'm gonna show you with one of them, I'm gonna put it in my paper holder. Now here's the thing, you're gonna to have to feed it in from the right side, feed it from right to left, because it is too wide. It spills out of the tray. Up here at the top, you can see it spills out of the tray. You wanna do as best you can to center it. it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you would like to try to center it. Sometimes you can flip it over and just make sure you know, are you lined up as best as possible? Close it. Now when I punch, it's you'll see it's magic. It, it still punches, you don't have to do any extra punches on it. You're just gonna come in and punch down the line. This is the confetti punch. You can see that it's doing a great job punching clear to that edge. So I have that nice, goes all the way from edge to edge. So then you just keep doing that for all of your pieces until you have all eight of your triangles. And then what you do is when you lay them on there, you're just gonna stack them in, everything defaulting to the corner. That's what I mean, it's super easy if you do this this way. But it waste paper. I've got a lot, I could go ahead and just cut this off because it's all gonna be layered, it's all gonna be covered up, right? This corner, this whole section right here was totally a waste. Okay, so with that in mind, how do we do this with just strips of paper, right? I've got a 13 by 13 mat. I've got room measurements. I can lay things on an angle, right? I can use my measurements here. So let's do that. I'm gonna come back to my directions, maybe. Oh, there they are. We're gonna be using two and a half inch strips of paper. That is kind of the um, magic. I want you guys, the, the thing to think about, the magic number here is two and a half inches wide. With two and a half inches wide, we'll be able to layer them and still have that, um, that next color providing the backing of the previous color um, or the color above it. So you can see here, if we look at that light blue at the bottom, the dark teal shows through because that's the next layer under it and it works its way up to the middle. So that's what we're going to do. I'm gonna do some two and a half inch strips and I'm going to um, lay them on here at a diagonal. The only thing that is we have to note, 12 inches on the diagonal will extend from eight and a half to eight and a half. I cannot go to nine. 
we saw nine inches on the diagonal is actually longer. If we cut a nine inch square on the diagonal, what we result with is longer than 12 inches. You can see it is extending above and below these lines. If I have a 12 inch strip that is two and a half inches wide and I cut that, it's only 12 inches long. When I lay it on the diagonal, I can only go for at eight and a half to eight and a half inches. To me, that's an okay compromise. The difference is, is I'm gonna have a little bit more space in the middle and my outside triangles are gonna be a little bit further out, I guess you could say. I think that's an okay compromise. I feel like I'm gonna be using less paper. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with some crimson and I'm gonna cut this. Um, I can punch and cut to two and a half inches. I would say if you are using an edge style, trim, uh, edge style um, punch, I would go ahead and punch first and cut um, afterwards, cutting it at two and a half inches. So let me go ahead. I know, let me give you a couple extra little tips here. Okay, so where you see the khaki strips, you need two of those. Your long strips, you need two of them. The next strip in is kind of a light bluish aqua color. You're also gonna need two 12 inch strips to make those pieces. These pieces are long. They, you're gonna take a whole 12 inch piece and put it on there and then you'll trim off the excess. Next, the dark teal, you only need to cut one 12 inch strip. You will be able to do both pieces off of one strip. And this outside, the, the final, the smallest triangle here, you will also just need one. So I know with my red, or my crimson cardstock, I know I need two 12 inch lengths of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch this. Now I am alternating. I am alternating animal tracks because they were the Bruins. Their mascot is a bear. And I'm alternating confetti because I thought it'd be fun. They're throwing their caps up in the air. I thought that would be fun. So, I think the red, uh, the, the red, I have it alternating here on my notes. I listed, I'm going to do silver or the platinum shimmer, then red. I think then I'm coming in with, I can't see with black and then red again. So if I am doing confetti on this one, I had a pen. This is going to be animal tracks, confetti animal tracks, confetti. That's telling me what I need to punch. So I need two, I actually need a total of three red with a confetti. If you're a person who likes to make shaker cards, the confetti punch out pieces are definitely a save type of thing. You want to save those, the punched out pieces. I'm going to punch and cut at two and a half inches. I've had people ask me before why I line my paper up on the bottom. It's only because I generally hold it with my left hand and it's just easier rather than pushing it up towards the top. I just kind of grip it down here at the bottom. Do what's comfortable. I don't know that it matters that much. So I need two more. And like I said, these are all two and a half inches. I'm punching two and a half inches. And one more. I'm repeating the red in there. So that's why I'm gonna use, this piece will actually end up being cut in half after
Oop, two and a half. That's what I mean. Two and a half. Next up, I'm going to go ahead with the Platinum Shimmer. And this one I am going to punch with Animal Tracks. I need two of them with Animal Tracks. Something that's kind of interesting is my... Um, my son went to, is at Washington State University. They're the Cougars, the Cougs, and uh, their colors are also crimson and gray. So he's going to have just one big crimson and gray album, or it'll be an extension. It works out really well because I can just, you know, I have no problems. Anything that's red, anything that's black, anything that's the gray I get because I will use it. Um, I've got to still get through my current seniors thing. So they do drama. So I don't have as much in the drama stuff. I usually default to, you know, things that go with the theme of their production. Um, so not as much athletics. Well, really no athletics. They tried. They tried soccer when they were little. It didn't work out so well. So I need two of the animal tracks at that two and a half inch length. Um, that is, and I just need two, one for each corner. And then I need black. I'm using black shimmer little bit of sparkle, black shimmer. I will come in here and I just need to punch one 12 inch length of the, um, animal tracks because I will be, um, cutting it in half and using it in each corner. That six inch length makes that die does cover that diagonal. I'll show you how to line it all up so that it works. You're definitely going to want to have your 13 by 13 inch mat. Hopefully that is something you have. If you don't, just a reminder, free shipping right now with Creative Memories. On, if you're in the U.S., it's on orders of $80 or more. If you're outside, um, if you're in Canada, I am not sure. Um, I'm not sure if that, I hope, I'm not sure if the, that promotion extends down into Australia. Sometimes they have different promotions than we have. So again, this is my last one at two and a half inches. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of a dry fit. I'm only going to practice. I'm only going to lay out one corner and I'm just literally making sure that I like my pattern. So here I've got my 12 inch length. And like I said, I can only go to eight and a half inches. That is the extent of how far I can go. So if you have your, um, your cutting mat, so your creative memories is up here in the upper left, your zeros are here. So you kind of have to think about it backwards. When I say it's, it only goes eight and a half inches, you're actually going to come down then to three and a half from the, and that's where you're going to, um, that's where it will go. That's how you know you have the right angle. Now, my next color I was going to use is the the crimson and then we're going to go with black and then we're going to go with the red again so now the question comes for me is do i like this do i want to change anything and that's where I wasn't sure. I don't know if I want to not have, the, I've got black in the background. Or should I just go with all of the platinum shimmer. I could do my, I 
I can't decide. I kind of wish, I don't know whether, would I like it more if it's my issue because I'm not sure I like the, What do you guys think of that? I'm almost thinking that I was not necessarily liking the black paws. Um, <laughs> did you, did you say that she doesn't like the, 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 the red behind the animal tracks and it looks like blood. Oh, I, I can, I can understand that. Maybe if I had done, if I had done it reverse and I had done animal tracks on the red. Um, and then just to see here, my photos, this is what my photos are going to be. Something along these lines is going to be my photos and imagining those with red, put a strip of black behind the gray. So that's another option too, is I could come in here and then just do the black. Yeah, that probably works there. Just doing the black behind the, the, the gray there. So I'll put a strip of black. Maybe what I'll do is instead of worrying about, I'm going to have to, I'm going to punch. If I back my, I'm going to have to punch another silver. Um, I'm thinking about this. I need one more silver animal tracks or the platinum shimmer animal tracks. Since I'm not using the black anymore, I decided to not use that. I need another one of these animal tracks in the platinum shimmer. This is the part that sometimes, I don't know if you guys are, if you do this, this is, I mean, this is the nice thing about not cutting those big squares um, is I'm only, I only have two and a half inch strips and I'm using cardstock, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, you know, I don't feel like I'm, I've got lots of cardstock. If this was my pretty like silver pattern paper, I might be a little bit more like, oh my gosh, I don't want to cut more of it. What I'm going to do, I am going to cut some one inch pieces of black shimmer paper to put behind my animal tracks. I will go ahead and even where the black is here, I'm going to put the shimmer because I've got that different color. All right. I need two animal tracks that are going to be long. Those go on the outside edges. Three and a half to three and a half, or well, it's it's eight and a, eight and a half to eight and a half. That's what they need to be. Eight and a half to eight and a half. So what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and put the black shimmer on here, the one inch piece, just to cover up those paw prints, just to give that. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and put some adhesive on. I'm going to lay these on. Make sure my paper, my background needs to be lined up. I need to make sure my background is lined up on my paper correctly. And I'm going to find that it's essentially that three and a half to three and a half, because that's the side of the paper of the, the, um, my ruler. So I came down here three and a half from the top three and a half over from the side, this bottom side, and I'm going to lay my paper on. And I do have some trimming I'm going to need to do. I will trim that before I lay my next piece on because I need to be able to see the measurements so that I can line it up. The other option I could have done is I could have done a 45 degree angle cut on each edge, right? I could come in here and cut this 45 degrees off on either side. The downside to that is 
I have been known to cut the wrong side and that I've wasted everything. So to me, it's easier to just put it on my paper and trim off the excess. Then I know I'm cutting the correct corners. And here I'm gonna come down. I need to find that three and a half and three and a half. And there we go. Let's see here. I'm gonna come with my scissors. I might be able to just give this a quick trim with my cutting. Let's see how this is. Yeah, this will come in. I can just come in with my trimmer, cut off. The reason I need to cut these off is I need to be able to see along my cut. I need to be able to see along my ruler. Okay. So this piece, I need to measure my first ones over here. I did, I came, I was eight and a half inches from here to here, or I came down three and a half inches from the top. Now I'm gonna come down to five and a half. I'm gonna add two inches to that. I'm gonna come down to five and a half. I am, I'm gonna end up using the full length of this piece, or almost the full length. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and put some adhesive on. Come in here, add some adhesive there. I'm gonna start over here, five and a half. I found five and a half. Let me get this back up where you guys can see. Five and a half, right here. Five and a half from the left. Make sure your paper is lined up. Five and a half from the left. That's where I'm gonna put my corner. And I'm gonna come down five and a half from the top. So just above that six inch, I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna line up. That's where I want it to cross. All right. Same thing up here. I'm gonna go ahead, put some adhesive on. I want to cross at five and a half inches and I want to cross over here at five and a half inches from the right. Remember the right over here is my zero coming over to five and a half inches. And I'll go ahead and give this a trim. Come to the back side. You can cut from the front wherever you are comfortable cutting. Just trimming this up because I still need to be able to use that outside edge. So yeah, the squares is probably faster, but you use a little bit more paper. I am gonna put this on so that my animal tracks go the other direction. Now here's the deal. I should be able to cut this piece in half at six inches, and I should be able to use this one 12 inch length to do both corners. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim this at six inches. That one inch piece here, I also need to trim at six inches. This needs to be trimmed in half. This is what I'm backing my, my bear paws. Well, the animal tracks. And I want my animal tracks, I think, to go the other direction. This is not quite, I have a, maybe a little bit more space in here. It's not quite as even, but I think it's okay. If you really wanted it to be, I would have need to cut a third one to come in at that seven and a half. I can't go quite seven and a half to seven and a half. I'm gonna have to come down here to seven and three quarters. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a spacing than I was maybe hoping for, but that's okay. 
oops. I'll use that one for up there. Putting some adhesive on. I'm gonna put a little bit more under there because it can lift up just a little bit more than I would like. Now I'm going to come in here, line up my pieces again, and I seven and three quarters to seven and three quarters. I'm basically going that six inch to six inch. I'm using the entire six inch length. And then I'll be able to come in with my last piece here. I'm going to cut it in half as well. Before I put my trimmer away, I do need to come in and trim off these pieces. One more, and then we'll just have that final crimson piece to put down that little triangle in the corner. And then it'll be time to start adding all the other components. I totally should not have used regular adhesive where I did because it's going to stick through my confetti. So I'm just going to use, it's coming up okay off of that piece. And this one I want to go ahead, I think I'm going to come across, I'm going to crop across it. Um, we'll come back two inches. We'll cross it right around um, nine and three quarters, somewhere between nine and three quarters and 10. Just get whatever, whatever measurement I pick on this side, I wanna pick the same on the other side. I want that nice 45 degree angle. I'm gonna use some repo and then permanent adhesive down there in the corner and then I'll lay this in. Rotate this around, do the same thing in this corner. Putting that final piece in place. And then I'll be able to go ahead and trim everything. This one I'm gonna go ahead, I'll just trim with scissors. I don't think I can trim it as easily in my trimmer since I'm coming up so far above. So there we go. Let's see, I think it's gonna go more like this. I want my main try, my main paths to go that way. So there is my background. So now it is figuring out how I'm going to do this. The question comes into is do I want
the white shimmer. I think I am going to use the white shimmer. These photos are trimmed to the measurements that are included in the handout. And the measurements in here, they want you to use, they, it's a four by four mats and a four by six mats. And then you trim your photos down so that they fit in those mats. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, the question is whether or not I have another piece of white shimmer readily available. I had a scrap. And I think that's what I meant to go grab this morning. Oh, I have a package of it, just not opened. New routines this morning, trying to get everybody up, ready to go. Asking Cody, do you want a home lunch? Are you gonna have school lunch? And he informed me he was having school lunch because he thought they would have more options. It's like, okay, whatever. It's easier for me anyway. All right, so I'm gonna cut this four inches wide. I'll cut it at six inches, giving myself that four by six inch mat. And then I'll come over here and cut this one at four inches to give myself a four by four mat. I will need one more four by four mat. So I'll cut this at four inches. The nice thing about this is I could peekaboo these photos and that might happen. Obviously I have more photos from graduation. This really should have been a two page layout, extending this out, having a second piece of paper here, maybe taking this corner, putting it over here, right? But um, I not, so I may end up, I have a few more photos where these could be done with the peekaboo. I actually think I want a little bit more of the white mat showing. So what I'm gonna do instead of ex making my mat bigger, I've already cut it, I don't wanna do that. I have room within my photos to cut these down a little bit. I want more of the white to show through. So instead of doing a three and three quarters, I'm gonna come down to closer to three and a half by three and a half. It's probably technically going to be three and five eighths. Just giving myself a bit of a chunkier mat. I want to separate, make sure I can see good separation between the photos and the background. My photos are really busy. There's lots of heads in there. And I think having a little bit more separation can help. And I have plenty of room. I have plenty of room to crop on these photos. Let's come in here, add some adhesive to the back of the photos. And then I am gonna have to figure out, I still have to do, I pulled some of the embellishment things that I can add. I'm not certain, I, I probably will go ahead and use my um, little die cut machine to cut out some letters from cardstock or the shimmer paper. They had or things organized a little bit more like this in the layout, but you can see there, I just have a little bit more separation with those photos or the, the, um, and then of course I could come in with, I have to keep in mind if I am using peekaboo pockets, I have to keep in mind how I'm using my embellishments because I need to be able to lift things, right? So I could come in I liked this one. It said, let the journey begin, maybe more for, um, you know, where they throw their caps um, because this is the end of the graduation ceremony itself. So I'll play around with this. I probably will do um, a little bit here. I could go ahead and put in a little journal space. They do have um, a little tag they use for journaling. Um, I've got some uh, space to add those types of things in. Um, 
I could cluster some of the embellishments a little bit. I don't know. I'll figure that out now that I've got it all ready to go on the page. I'll do those final details. I'll have the finished image so you guys can see what that looks like. So I appreciate you guys following along. Um, I know I probably made it um, using the strips, use less paper, a little more complex to put together maybe, but I think overall it worked out really well. So um, I'll have this layout ready to share um, a little bit later today. There is a hashtag on the um, handout. If you look at the handout, you'll see at the bottom, it says scrap, hashtag scrapbook live 0906. If you wanna share your version of the layout in the um, scrapbooking with Megan Facebook group, you can use that hashtag there. Um, other big announcements, I mean, nothing said, well, there's free shipping with Creative Memories, right? Just a warning, Creative Memories is a little behind with shipping right now. They have just been, I mean, everybody loves free shipping. We had a big launch last week. So products are coming out to you. They are on their way or they will be on their way. You'll get a shipping notification from Creative Memories. If you have not already, I highly recommend um, signing up with UPS so you get notifications when your deliveries are to be expected. Um, and that shipping, free shipping, um, goes for a couple more days. It ends at Friday at 10 AM. The virtual crop, the worldwide virtual crop is coming up this weekend. That's when the official secret box opening is coming. If you ordered the secret box directly from creative memories, you should be receiving a second um, thing. It may be coming in the post office mail. It's going to come as um, there's something they forgot to put in the box, but they're getting it to you. So it should be coming. If you do not have it by the end of the week, um, you can reach out to creative memories with your order number and you can inquire as to where it is. Um, so I have not received mine yet, but I'm out here on the coast. It takes five days from, um, for, uh, stuff to reach me from creative memories, or it can take that long. And we have the holiday. So we have to keep that in mind too. So free shipping, um, there is the virtual crop. I will be back next week where school's back in session. So I am back now with weekly scrapbook lives. However, next week we're going to do it on Tuesday. Instead of Wednesday, I am leaving on Wednesday to go see Tessa in Indianapolis. She has a crop next week. She may have room for additional scrapbookers. So if you're in the Indianapolis area and you would like to attend an in-person crop, um, you can go um, contact Tessa Chapel. I think if you go to tessascrapbooks.com, she'll have some information on there. You can find her on Facebook. So I'll be in Indianapolis starting on Wednesday next week, but I'm going to have scrapbook live before we, um, I, on that Tuesday, also on Tuesday, because it's going to be a very scrappy day. We have power hour is our, um, September power hour is on Tuesday, the 12th. So that'll be in the evening at, uh, 8 PM Eastern, 5 PM Pacific. So if you have already registered and you've been to our power hours before, you don't have to do anything. We'll just send you an email on Monday with all the details. If you are brand new and would like more information about Power Hour, you can go to megatintessa.com and you can register. It's a free class. Um, we just have fun putting some stuff together. So I think that is all I have. If you did join us late, um, the video will be coming soon. As soon as I end it, you'll be able to go rewatch it on Facebook. Um, I do have it. I will have it on YouTube a little bit later today. Once I get everything here on my end, all figured out, um, my layout completely finished and ready to go. All right. So everybody have fun. This weekend's going to be exciting. There will be a total of 12 different layouts. It looks like Creative Memories will be releasing them in kind of batches of four at a time. Uh, the first one will come out on Thursday. So is that when we're opening the box? Must be when we're opening the box. It's going to be on Thursday, right? That's tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Today with the holiday, it's um, I lost all track of time. So good. I'm seeing Sharon said she got hers and Maureen just got her missing items. So I am, yay. I am super excited for you guys to get those. I cannot wait to um, play with mine a little bit. I was waiting for the missing item to come before I started playing too much. I've opened the box guys. I mean, I just, I do. I, I never wait. Um, all right, everybody take care, stay cool out there or stay warm. Hopefully everybody's had um, a fantastic week and I will see you guys next week on Tuesday. All right. See you soon.